All right, so welcome back to 10.3. We're gonna solve polynomial equations in factored form. Factoring is gonna be a big, big, big thing for you coming up uh, the rest of this chapter, all right? Pretty much the entire chapter. What we're gonna start off with is how to actually solve these things, all right? So the first thing we need to do here is understand how to solve them. And we're gonna use this thing called the zero product property. It's pretty, it says if A times B is zero, then either A is zero or B is zero. And, he, and here's all it says. If I have two numbers, three times something equals zero. If I multiply, the only thing I can multiply three by and get zero is zero. So if A were three, then B would have to be zero. In other words, the only way I can get an, a product, an answer of zero when I multiply is to multiply one of the factors by zero. Likewise, what times seven equals zero? Well, the only thing I can multiply seven by to get zero is zero. It's pretty fantastic if you think about it, but it's going to come up again, <clears throat> and it's just important that you understand that. One side of the equation has to be zero, and the other side is the polynomial factors. Remember, factors are things that you multiply. Here's one factor, x minus 6. Here's the other factor, x plus 5. So these are our polynomial factors. On this side, we have to have zero. So it's going to be real important that when we do this, we find zero. And what are we finding? We're finding the solutions, which are also called the roots, or the zeros of the function. To do this, I know that this first one or the second one, one of these must be zero. I don't know which, so I'm going to set them both equal to zero. I'm going to say x minus 6 equals zero, or possibly the other one equals zero, x plus 5 equals zero. So now I have an equation here that I can solve. I can add 6 to both sides. And I know that x equals 6, or I could have had this one, minus 5, x equals negative 5. I could have had either of these two answers, and it would have made this equation true. And look, let's just try it. Let's say my answer was 6. Well, 6 minus 6 is 0. 0 times whatever this is over here equals 0. Same thing with this. If I plug in negative 5, negative 5 plus 5 is 0. The zero times whatever I have over here is zero. That's why it works. That's how we find these solutions. Let's try and find these two. So I have to set my first factor, b minus 3 fourths, equal to zero. Or I set my second factor, 4b plus 5, equal to zero. And I solve them. The opposite of minus 3 fourths is plus 3 fourths. All right. And then I have b equals 3 fourths. Or, over here I have to subtract 5, 4b equals negative 5, divide by 4, and b would equal negative 5 fourths. I have two answers, two possibilities, that if I had plugged them in, we would have had what this factor equal to 0 or that factor equal to 0. All right. Right now, what I'm going to show you is all the time my kids ask me, oh, who's your favorite student, or I'm your favorite student, or blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't know about favorite students. You know, you guys are all great. But by far, the one kid that makes me laugh more than others is this kid. And here's a few video highlights of him. Ding, ding, ding. All right, first academic alert, Wiggum. Ralph. I won! I won! No, no, Ralph. This means you're failing English. Me fail English? That's impossible. Hmm. And I want a bike, and a monkey, and a friend for the monkey. You're not going to start any fires, are you? At my house, we call them, uh-oh. <clears throat> Class, in what year was one plus one? The answer is the amazing Ralph. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Super Nintendo Chalmers. Meow. I'm learning. Hey, Simpson, race ya. Push one to the front of the bus gets Martin's lunch money. What? Go Apple. Go Orange. Go Banana. I mean, seriously, Ralph Wiggum, dude makes me laugh. All right, so check this out. We know how to do this. We know that 3x times 2x is 6x squared. Because 3 times 2 is 6, and x times x is x squared. And we know that 3x times negative 4 is negative 12x. 
this way, when I go this way, we know that's called multiplying, also known as the distributive property. When I go backwards, I'm doing what's called factoring, all right? Sometimes I'll even call it undistribute, all right? It doesn't sound great. It's not probably proper, but I think it makes sense. Distributive property has a, has does something, I undistribute, all right? So I'm going to teach you how to undistribute or factor. All right, we're going to factor out a greatest common factor, a GCF. In other words, common, what is in both of these things, all right? Now, I'm going to show you the long way, and then I'm going to show you the short way. So the first thing I'm going to do is 15x. Well, what are the factors of 15? 1 times 3 times 5 times x. Those are all the possible factors. And then over here I have 20, which is 1 times 2 times 2 times 5 times y. 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 5 is 20 times y. All right, so what's in common? Well, there's a 1 in common, right? There's a 5 in common, and that's it, basically. All right, so I'm going to take the common things out. So 5 times 1 goes on the outside because I'm undistributing. All right, now what's left? Well, what's left here? If I take these out, I have 3 times x. 3x is left here. And what's left over here? 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times y is 4y. So this is 5 times 3x plus 4y. And that's the long way about it. All right, that shows you that I took out what is in common. And that's a perfectly good way to do it. But let me show you another way to do it. The way I do it is I always start with my letters. And I look at my letters. Is there anything in common between X and Y? No. So I'm not going to take any common letters out. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to count. How many terms do I have? One, two. I have two terms. I'm going to put a plus sign here in the middle because there's a plus sign there. All right. Now I'm going to go. I'm going to put my letters in because I didn't take them out. Now I'm going to look at the numbers. I go to the smallest number because if I have the greatest common thing, the greatest number I could take out of both is 15, all right? Because it, I, it can't be 20 because there's no 20 here. It's got to be the smallest number. So I look at 15 and I say to myself, well, what are factors of 15? 1 times 15, 3 times 5. And I start with the biggest because I want the greatest. Does 15 go into 20? No. So I cross it off. Does 5 go into 20? It sure does. So 5 comes on the outside. And now how I talked about distribution, I'm undistributing. I'm factoring the opposite of multiplying when I distribute. I'm going to divide. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 20 divided by 5 is 4. All right, and you can even check. 5 times 3x is 15x. 5 times 4y is 20y. So let's try another one. All right, 12y squared minus 21y. So the first thing I'm going to look for is my variables. Again, I have y to the second and y to the first. That's like saying I have two y's, right, and one y. Well, the most I could take out is the smaller one. Why? So I'm going to take the smaller one out. All right. I'm going to put a minus here in the middle. Now I'm going to look at the numbers. My smaller number is 12. I always work the smallest number. Does 12 go into 21? Nope. So I need to think about what are my factors of 12? 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. And I just said 12 doesn't go into 21. Does 6 go into 21? No. So it's not in common. Does 4 go into 21? No, it's not in common. Does 3 go into 21? Yeah, 3 goes into 21 seven times. So 3 is in common. It comes out. Now I undistribute. I factor. So I'm dividing. 12 divided by 3 is 4. I had two y's. I took one of them out. I have one y left. All right. Minus 21 divided by 3 is 7. I had one y. I took it out. So I have no y's left. And there is taking out a greatest common factor, all right? Now, that, let's apply the two things we've learned and let's solve by factoring. Remember, when we solve, the first thing we have to have is everything on one side equal to zero, which is what we have. So now we want to get our greatest common factor. So let's look. All right, tip number one, right? 
smallest variable. All right, a lot of times it's just one X. So I have X squared and X. My smallest is X, it comes out. Then I'm gonna do tip number two, my uh, numbers. All right, then I work with my numbers. And again, smallest factors. So my smallest number is 10. So I look at 10, one times 10, two times five. Does 10 go into 15? No. Does five go into 15? Yes. So five comes out. So now I'm gonna divide. 10 divided by five is two. I had two X's, I took one away, I have one left. Minus 15 divided by five is three. I had one X, I took it away, I have no X's left. So that's factored, but now we need to solve. So I have one factor, two factors. So I have to set them equal to zero, five X equals zero. Or, 2x minus 3 equals 0. Alright, so now I solve. I divide by 5. x equals 0. Or, got to add 3 over here. 2x equals 3. Divide by 2. x would equal 3 halves. So I have two possibilities. Alright, let's try this one. The astute student, not Ralph, would say, I don't have this equal to zero. So the first thing I have to do is set it equal to zero. Now, I never want to move the higher degree. So that's two. That's a one. I'm going to move this. The opposite of plus 12w is minus 12w. Now, a lot of you are thinking you can subtract these, but that's a w squared and a w. They're not like terms. So 6w squared minus 12w equals zero. All right. Computer's lagging a little behind. All right, so now we need a greatest common factor. So again, start with my smallest variable, w squared, w, w comes out. St go to my smallest number, six. Let's say it factors is six. One and six, two and three. Start with the biggest. Does six go into 12? Well, it sure does, so it comes out. Now I divide. 6 divided by 6 is 1. 2 w's take away 1. I have w. 12 divided by 6 is 2. I had 1 w. I took it away. All right. So now I have my two factors. And I set them equal to 0. 6 w equals 0. Or w minus 2 equals 0. Divide by 6. So w could equal 0. Or add 2 w could equal two two answers all right so pause the video and try this next set great all right here we go oh three terms this could be a little bit tricky so let's see all right let's take out my smallest variable that's a g all right we're going to talk about negatives later but for now let's just not worry about them so what I, my smallest number is 6, 14, 2, so I want to think 2, 1 times 2. Oh, this is going to be good. Does 2 go into 14? Yep. Does 2 go into 6? Yep. So 2 comes out. So negative 2 divided by 2 is negative g. I had 1g I took away, so there's 3 left. 14 divided by 2 is 7. I had 2g's. I took 1 away, so there's 1 left. G, uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. I had one G, I took it away, so there's none left. So two G times negative G to the third plus seven G plus three. All right, down here we have nine Y squared equals 15 Y. All right, gotta get it equal to zero. So subtract 15 Y. So now I have nine Y squared minus 15 Y equals zero. Now I can factor. My smallest variable is a y. All right. My smallest number is 9. Let's see, 1 times 9 or 3 times 3. Does 9 go into 15? No. Does 3? Yes. So I take a 3 out. 9 divided by 3 is 3. I had two y's. I took it away. I have one y. Minus 15 divided by 3 is 5. Y divided by y, it's gone. All right, now I have to solve. So I have 3y equals 0, first one, or 
3y minus 5 equals 0. So let's do the hard one first. I'm going to add 5. 3y equals 5. I'm going to divide by 3. So y could equal 5 thirds. Or divide by 3, y could equal 0. All right. That's 9 4. Best of luck on the mastery check. Kill it. Very important skill. If you don't get this the first mastery check, don't worry. You want to make sure you know how to do this. Peace. I'm out of here.